I am Liam Porter, uh, a, a sixth grader at at Clarkshaw Magnet School. School, and I'm going to be interviewing my neighbor about what was it uh, like in the uh, civil rights era. So, Mr. Pa, uh, uh, he tells your name and your birthday. Uh, my name is Paul Dinkin. My birthday is December the 14th. I'm an old man. You don't need the year. Okay. Where were you uh, born? The uh, Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Uh, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Physical therapist. Were you in the military? No, I was drafted. But I was sent back home for medical reasons. Uh, what did you do for a living? I taught school. I worked as a railroad conductor and brakeman. And now I'm driving a school bus and a charter bus. What, what was it like growing up in the civil rights era? It was scary for black people. And I was... I think 17 or 18 at the time when Dr. King was killed. No, correction, when Robert Kennedy was killed. And that wasn't part of the Civil Rights Movement. I'm, I'm associated here. Uh, it was scary. In fact, I was in college during that time. And uh, I never will forget, I was on my way back to school. It was myself and three friends. I went to school in Missouri, in uh, Jefferson City, Missouri, and we had to travel through Mississippi. So we stopped at a service station to put some luggage in the trunk. And this, this white man came out with a shotgun and told us to get off his property. And we simply said we just wanted to put some luggage in the trunk and we would be moving on. But he said, get off this property, so I drove off. I was the owner of the car. I drove off. Uh, I remember we had a riot on campus, and they called in the National Guard. And I'll never forget, there was a representative from the city of St. Louis, Missouri, that came and spoke to us, because we had the student union locked down. That was our building. And he came and pleaded with us to let the building go because the National Guard would not play with us. They would beat us. They would actually literally beat us out of the student union. Uh, I guess it's fair to say the civil rights movement all stemmed from one activity, and that was with Miss Rosa Park refusing to give up her seat on the bus in Birmingham, Alabama. Community where you grew up? I grew up in a semi-affluent neighborhood, fairly well off to do blacks. Uh, my godmother was the wife and teacher. She was, a, she was a teacher, but she was the wife of a, a medical doctor. My across the street neighbor was uh, a city supervisor. That was kind of unheard of back in my day. Blacks didn't have those kind of jobs. Well, not as city supervisor. Down the street was another prominent businessman. So I grew up in a real nice neighborhood. And, uh, but I lived off of one of the main streets in our community, which was called Davis Avenue. And everything happened on Davis Avenue. That's like, that was the main vein for the black community. Coming from Pritchett, Chickasaw, Sarah Land, going downtown, basically people came down Davis Avenue. Davis Avenue was all black, with a few white businesses. What was school like back then? For us, school was a must. There was no getting around it. Our parents didn't allow no dropouts, no quitting. Because our parents 
didn't have the opportunity that we had. They didn't, a lot of didn't get a chance to go to school. They had to work to help their moms and daddies to just stay alive, and especially if they had a large family. Uh, my mama was lucky enough to go off to school, but she didn't finish because she quit. But it was, it was a good community, it was a good opportunity for, for blacks to go to school, but we only went to black schools and black universities and black colleges. There was no integration at that time. Did you face discrimination growing up? Yes, I did. Any examples of how you were treated differently? I was looked upon as a young man that was not qualified for the job that I was applying for, which, don't be surprised now, which was a stock boy in a department store. I couldn't work on the floor as a salesperson. I couldn't work as far as putting the mannequins together and all these talents I had, so I had to sell for a job in the uh, stock one. And I couldn't get it. They turned me down. So I wound up working at a black community grocery store. How did it affect you as you got older? Well, for one thing, it, 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 it showed me the importance of an education. What lessons did you learn from this time in your life? I learned that black folks really had no rights. They say we did, but we didn't. We weren't given equal opportunity to work, to go to school where we wanted to go to school. We, we didn't have that. So we had to make up in our mind, we was gonna do the best we could do with what was available to us. That meant black university, black college, black medical schools, whatever, black known businesses. We had to, we had to focus on that, creating our own businesses. That was it. That's how it affected me. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about it? I really, really don't see any changes coming until the young people decide they want to change. So my advice to you and your friends is to always be aware of your surroundings. Know where you are, know who you with, know who you can trust. Well, this is a leaf a Porter, a sixth grader at Clark uh, Shaw Magnet School. Thank, thank you, Mr. Pop, for, uh, for telling us uh, what was it like being in the Civil Rights era. Oh, you're quite welcome. I hope I was a big help to you. Thank you for watching.